Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today with some new inspiration for the Not Too Shabby Lazy Day Box of the Month kit as well as the April 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the weekend, I told you a little bit about the latest and the first not too shabby box of the month kit called Lazy Day and I gave you a peek at it by creating the set of cards that you see on screen. Yesterday, some of the design team had a little hop and they shared even more inspiration using the kit. I will make sure to link the first video in that hop below so you can go watch that and follow along and after you're completely done, you can enter a raffle copter for a $25 store credit giveaway. Today, I thought I would stop by and show you that how with just one piece of six by six paper and altering the sheet load from April 2021 just a little bit, you could get two completed cards. I will be using from the Lazy Day Kit, the Lazy Day Paper Pack, as well as the Not Too Shabby Not Today stamp set from that kit. Now I will add a few things later on when I get into the process. I will be sure to let you know about those, but if I ever leave you with any questions, as always, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing the cutting. And in order to get two cards out of the one six by six pattern paper, it does need to be a double sided pattern. Now I will be adjusting this a little bit instead of the pattern paper strip there that's matted being three and a quarter inches tall, it will only be three inches tall for these cards. So what I'm going to do is cut the piece of pattern paper in half to six inches wide by three inches tall. Then I'm going to cut a piece for the vertical matted strip and I'm going to cut that to the same width as pattern paper B on the sketch which is one and a half inches wide but then again this is only three inches tall instead of three and a quarter inches. Then with the piece that's left over I'm going to cut one inch off the right side. This then will spread across the slimline card just like the sketch. I do the same thing with the second piece but then I will use the reverse pieces on that second card. I did get out two pieces of heavyweight white cardstock, and for my card base, I cut it exactly like the cutting guides on the free printable show. Now, while I cut those down and fold them, I did want to let you know that if you're interested in downloading the free printable from April 2021, I will have the debut video linked below. You'll just watch that and find out how you can download it. Now to get the sediment piece and the mat for the vertical strip on the front, I am just going to use what's left over and cut that down until I am done and have those four pieces. For the vertical mat, I cut those to one and three quarters inches wide by three inches tall. And then finally for the sediment pieces, I cut two pieces that were three and a half inches wide by one and a quarter inches tall. Now that the main pattern paper and cardstock pieces were ready, I could go ahead and start to put the cards together. I started by matting the vertical strip with the white cardstock mat, and you'll see there that I did forget while I was cutting it to cut it to only three inches tall instead of three and a quarter, but that was an easy fix with the trimmer and I was ready to move on. Once I had those two pieces matted, I started to put down the background cardstock or the rest of it that spread across the card. I started with the larger piece and that got put to the left of the card front with an even border on the top, left, and bottom. And then I took the far right piece and I did the same thing, trying to keep those borders consistent. 
and then finally I put adhesive on the matted piece and that gets placed on the card front and it covers up the gap in between. I did the same thing for that second card and then it was time to move on to the stamping. And for that, I brought in my Misty so I can set my stamps up once and stamp them twice. Now per the sketch on the April sheet load, you do cut off the left side of the sentiment piece at an angle. So I just stacked those two pieces of cardstock and did that all at one time. The sentiment that I chose for this card reads, it's okay to take a break. And I will place this to the left end of that because you'll see here, I am gonna make sure that the chair from that stamp set fits over on the right. And it does, so I went ahead and I got the sentiment ready. And then you'll see that once I have picked it up with the lid, I do double check to make sure it's straight across using that grid. I ink this up and stamp it twice. And because it is a new stamp, I did rub my fingers across the top, but it stamped perfectly the first time. For the chairs, I will be stamping two of them, and I got out my scraps of Strathmore Bristol Smooth, and I chose two that the chair would fit on. I am using this paper for my chair, because later I will be using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens, and I find that those blend great on this cardstock. I stamped that chair twice, and then we're going to color these up. My mom is in town visiting and she helped me decide on the color for the chairs and I have to say that she was exactly right. I ended up going with 070 orange for these and you know me I do some very basic coloring. I lay down my zig where I want the shadows to be and then I blend it out with my clear blender pen. When I feel like I get too much of the orange on my blender, I do clean that off on the outside there area of the cardstock. I will be cutting this down later. Now, if it was something where I was going to save that whole rectangle, I would just have a piece of scratch paper off to the right or off to the side to do that on. Now, while I finish coloring this in, I thought I would stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Today's question is pretty quick and easy. I would like to know when you buy pattern paper for your card making, do you usually buy it in 12 by 12 or six by six? Make sure to let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. While I do have quite the stash of six by six paper pads, and I think most of the time they are sized better for card making, a majority of my pattern paper is 12 by 12 hot buy pads from Michaels. Off camera, I did bring in another zig marker to color the legs of my chairs, and I use number 62 dark brown. Once I had fussy cut both of the chairs, which was super easy to do, I then decided where on the sentiment strip I wanted each of those to go, and I added a little bit of ATG to the back of each chair. Once I had both of those in place, I did go ahead and bring in my big blue rolls of foam tape to add a little dimension to the card since it was pretty flat so far. I did end up using two widths on this piece. I used my 3 quarters inch and my 3 eighths inch. I just put some on the back so it would be sturdy or it would be supported and then I pulled that release paper and got these placed onto the card fronts. And here's a close up look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing my process today, how I made these quick and easy cards using the latest sheet load of cards and some goodies from the Lazy Day Box of the Month kit. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.